Hey everyone, today we're covering one of my favorite workflows on car modeling, which is how to model sports tires and rims. This is part of a series where I'm covering car modeling from start to finish. Today's video focuses specifically on the workflow for modeling detailed sports wheels, which can be applied to any type of wheel you may want to create. This series is targeted for beginner to advanced skill level in 3D modeling. My 2022.1 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya and you can see the progression that we've been making with each part in this series. And everything's coming together really nicely. We just wrapped up paneling in the previous video. And in this video, we are gonna focus on creating this very detailed looking tire and rim, specifically for sports wheels, all right? Now, if we take a look here, uh, I wanna reference some past videos that I've done. And you can see that I've gone through step by step from beginning to end, and I've shown people how to model using a similar workflow. So be sure to reference that if you want something to go, you know, step by step throughout the entire process, as well as how to create a specific type of tread. Now this tread specifically is more modular and these tread components are separate pieces from this tread. What makes this workflow different is you can see that everything is modeled into the geometry. And that's what we're gonna be covering today, all right? So with that, let's go ahead and kind of just jump right into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide everything here. And we're gonna focus on the overall workflow. So the very first thing that you're gonna to want to do is find your reference, okay? I can't. This can't be understated, and I've brought this up in every single video that I've done, but you really, really wanna spend the time finding your reference, all right? Now, of course, I am continuously Im increasing the amount of images that I'm, I'm finding for the Datsun 240Z, and we are specifically doing some Kangs uh, from Fast and the Furious, his version of the Datsun 240Z based on the latest poll. And the good thing is, you know, as you're finding references, that is going to get you most of the way there as far as finding the overall information for your wheels and tires. All right. Now, you want to find that information online of whatever rim or tire that you're creating. For the tires, you're always, always going to find that information right on the sidewall. Here are some photography reference where you can see the sidewall information, and this is going to give you all the information that you need on the overall specification. You can see that it says 235, 40, ZR17, and that's the tire size. And the 17 is for the rim. All right, so what we're gonna to wanna to do is plug in all of that information here, right? So the first thing is you can take a look as finding the brand of the tire. And luckily, most of these tires online, basically all, I've never had an issue finding reference. You're gonna find very nice orthographic, uh, maybe not orthographic, but at least, you know, front, side, you know, angled shots of your your tires, all right? So you just look up the brand and you can just do a little bit of research and get the information that you need. Now, as I said, this is a 235-40 R17. Now what's nice is the 235 lets you know the width of the overall tire, and then plugging it into this calculator, it lets you know the overall diameter, which I am doing in millimeters here, the overall width, the sidewall, width, uh, the sidewall height here, as well as the overall circumference and revolutions per kilometers. Now, they have more information on how they calculate it, so do take a look at that. This is a fantastic website. So I'm taking this diameter, this width, and this the information, and plugging that directly in Maya. So you can see here in this demo that I have this overall size for the tire, which is gonna be here. So if we see, I went ahead and just converted from millimeters to centimeters, we have the radius at 31 centimeters, the height, which in this case is going to be the width here at 23.5 centimeters, and then I just have quite a few subdivisions. Once you get the size of the overall tire, you wanna bring in your reference. Now, when figuring out the reference, the important thing is to figure out the overall tire pattern detail here. So what I've done is, like I said, I just went and found the reference online, 
and I'm specifically finding where this pattern repeats. I'm not worried about these holes here. I can maybe add those later if I want to, but you can see that this tread is pretty unique. It's pretty organic and detailed. So I go ahead and find this repeatable pattern. I go to the side view and I find out how many times this is repeating. Now, it's not a nice even number, it's no problem, and I'm actually glad it's it was a, an odd prime number like this, 11, so I can show you how I went through and set everything up. But I you know, went ahead and just found that it was 11 repeatable patterns all the way around the vehicle. All right, perfect, okay? So now that I have, I know that this pattern is repeatable and it repeats 11 times over the circumference of the tire, I can go ahead and start plugging in some numbers here. Now, what I end up doing is I end up putting in something that's di uh, easily divided by 11. So I can go ahead and do maybe 66. So I, that's the number that I, that I used, okay? Now, I use 66, and then what I end up doing is I go ahead and create the overall form for this tire, okay? And that's what this is here. I'm using very basic modeling toolkit tools here. So you can see that I've just gone ahead and I can just add one right in the middle with control middle mouse click. And then I can go ahead and turn on symmetry with world X. And then I can kind of add in, you know, those extra lines here. And I can do like an extrusion. I can select these faces here and I can do an extrude face and do an offset. So I'm just creating the basic form of our our tire okay now once I do that I can go ahead and you know just further block that out now all the tires that I've ever modeled of course are based off reference so you want to make sure to really focus on the overall profile the sidewall and the detail here it's not a perfect cylinder and it's not completely flat from all angles right so that's where you know using control middle mouse moving on the normal is really going to be helpful here right and you can go ahead and add in just a little bit of a move on the normal here on the middle because it's not perfectly straight across. So you can kind of move these to give some nice detail uh, in there. All right. So once you do that, you can go ahead and, of course, kind of delete these center faces here. And then there you go. You got a nice, clean tire that you can work with. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is take a look at adding and creating more detail here that we're gonna cut in for our tread pattern, okay? Because I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna do a nice smooth right here. Oops, passed it right there. And I'm actually going to give this two subdivisions. Now you may be thinking, wow, that's a lot, right? Why am I going that high? The reason why is because if we take a look again at the reference, this is a pretty organic shape. And this is on a cylindrical shape. Okay, if you've watched my past videos on, you know, how to add in detail hard surface cuts and everything, the key thing is having that even distribution of edge flow. What I actually have here too is just some samples of, you know, some past wheel examples that I've done. So you can see I can go in here real quick and show you kind of a, a quick example. So I'm going to grab this piece here and you can kind of see what we have, right? And if I go ahead and kind of smooth that, you can see that we're starting to get some artifacts happening. And once I've done an extrusion, you can kind of see how sloppy and messy that gets, right? It doesn't really look good. So we need to make sure that we have a good, even distribution, which is why I subdivide the model quite a bit. Now, as long as you follow the workflow, it's it's really easy to, to manage and kind of handle that as you're going, okay? So back to here, we can see that we have this piece here, and we've created a 11-sided or 11 excuse me, 11 times six, so 66 subdivisions around, and then we mesh smooth that, okay? So now that we've gone through and have done that, we can go ahead and kind of add in some of the key detail, which I typically go in and add in, 
you know, it's kind of what's called this bead that comes around. So that's where I kind of know this is where the tread goes to. Because in our reference, you can see that these cut patterns are going right up until the speed here. And that's really, really important. It's going to give me a good frame of reference. So all I end up doing really is just kind of selecting this, this piece here. And I go ahead and just kind of cut in that detail. And I'm actually going to turn off symmetry for this piece and just kind of cut that in. And we can do that easily on both sides. Again, this is just a quick quick frame of reference and it's not perfectly symmetrical so this is completely fine so I, I do this and then I go ahead and extrude that all right great so we have our bead in here we have the overall form so now we're going to go ahead and start cutting in the pattern now this is the important part so what I've done is again go ahead and find some good reference here and I end up just using this as the top view here so you can see I go to my channel box, show our reference images set up. And just in case, you can easily load in image reference by going to view, image plane, import image. And I have quite a few videos that covers that. And then you'd want to select that and scale that up to roughly about the right size. Now you have to keep in mind, right now, this is an orthographic view. Looking down at kind of this front view, that has perspective distortion. So it's not going to be a one-to-one. -one. So you don't want to use it as a one-to-one. -one. I'm just using it as reference and just to kind of get a good idea of where I really want to cut these patterns in. Okay. So I go ahead and select my smooth tire, my reference. And then what I can do is just begin cutting. Now, of course, because this is an asymmetrical model we want to make sure not to cut in any of that detail now you may be wondering when are we going to actually cut this and do radial symmetry with instancing we're going to do that after the pattern and i'll explain why here shortly so we simply want to go ahead and kind of cut using multi-cut and the key thing is here is because we're so subdivided you can basically just kind of go from corner to corner here and get some good detail uh, out of your mesh, right? So I'm going to make sure not to be in smooth preview and I'm just going to kind of start moving some things here. And I want to just continue to cut across, right? And so I'm going to do like, you know, show you a quick example of one of these and then I'll from there show you exactly what to do next, right? So then once I have that, I'll kind of cut this across. And it's a, it may be a little bit hard to see in the video, but you know, if I just quickly hide, this is kind of what I'm cutting. Now, again, the important thing here is I want to emphasize is don't cut so close to the actual extrusion line, okay? You actually want to be a bit farther. So the thing is, I'm just cutting some of this detail in, and then I'm going to end up moving it once I get that across, okay? So we can kind of continue to go here, and you know, I'll end up terminating this right about here where this line is. And that's the reason why I added that bead. So we're not going to worry about, you know, whether or not that makes it all the way uh, across there. Okay, and I'll probably actually end up taking this one like so. And actually, I'll probably just do it like this. So I can actually get this nice cut here. And we're just going to cut that across there. Okay, so you can kind of see how I've done that. And I'll actually cut this one across, right? So it's not, it doesn't look that great. And don't worry, right? Because what I do is I just kind of put in those cut lines. And then I go ahead and really start to move things and really make it look good, right? So this is what I mean by don't worry about having it so close to the cut line, because we're going to do what's called an offset. And we can actually end up, you know, target welding and going through and adding in those nice details, okay? And what I want to show you now is essentially the finished version. I don't think you need to see me cut in all of this detail here, but this is the overall workflow that I use. And then once I do that, I have kind of a finished cut version here. So what I end up doing here is I have this finished cut pattern. And again, this is not pretty and it's not meant to look pretty, but the pattern is all in here and you can kind of see what we have. And I'm also going to be, you know, extruding down this tread. Now, I don't do the extrusion here yet. The reason why is because I deleted all of the, the rest of the wheel. 
and I want to duplicate this first before extruding. And that's going to save some time down the road. Now you may be saying, well, how do I know exactly where to do this? Well, keep in mind, we have this reference here for this tire, right? And we said that it is 11 segments. And what I end up doing is just changing this to 11 segments. And then there you go. You can see that the 11 uh, segments on this tire size is exactly the same as this, right? It's all just being subdivided. So I can simply take this now and I'm going to do a copy first and then we'll do uh, an instance later. All right. So the thing is, we have 11 of these patterns. Remember from our pure ref, we're rotating around 11 times. So you simply want to go here really just simply open up a calculator, do 360 divided by the amount of times it repeats, 360 being 360 degrees for a full rotation, and we get 32.72 repeating to 0.3. So I just enter that here. I use copy, number of copies here. Actually, I don't want 11, I want 10 because this is the 11th one here. I simply go ahead and boom. So once we do that, I go ahead now and do a quick combine. And then I do a merge vertices on everything. So that way it'll clean up uh, everything that we need. And if you're modeling to scale, then a small value like 0 0.003 or 0 0.05, 0 uh, and whatnot will work great. Okay, so there we go. So we have this now, okay? Now the key thing that I want to do is make sure that with this, now I do want to show you why I haven't haven't done the instancing yet because I haven't extruded the tread. I'll do the instancing after I extrude the tread. For example, if I just simply switch this over to instance, and then if I go in here and begin extruding, because of the way this pattern works, if I try to extrude these lines here, like so, I believe it, if I take a look here, yeah, it should be these or this and this here, right? I want these ones to extrude down, right? And what's going to happen is I end up getting this extrusion, but then I have to do a lot more cleanup with these faces here, and then I have to start re-welding everything. As long as you're aware of that, and you can see that they don't actually extrude perfectly because of the way that they're, they're moving, right? And moving on the normal, all right? So that's the reason why I don't do that. So I'm going to undo that and not use the instancing yet. And then I'm going to switch to the pattern that I have here. Actually, go ahead and hide this. And I'll just go back here. All right. So now that I have that, I want to go ahead and do get ready and start extruding. OK, because I'll go ahead and select all the faces. So I'll go ahead and pause or fast forward to do that. OK, here we are. Now, the only thing is if you can see here in the pattern, maybe better if I pull up the reference, there's this kind of odd shape here, and I'm going to count that as an extrusion. So that's why I had to kind of cut in this line here to get ready for the extrusion, or the offset, I should say. Now, again, all that really matters is having the repeatable pattern. I don't need to obviously select everything else. And I just want to quickly just show you again, this is how I cut everything in. Right. Don't worry about the triangles and, and whatnot because of the amount of subdivisions here. It's going to subdivide fine and with minimal, minimal artifacts. So just trust me on this one. You know, having triangles isn't the worst thing in the world. And this is going to give us some the detail that we need here. Right. And this is why I prefer this workflow rather than trying to really focus on, you know, very specific cuts with not enough subdivisions. So, again, I'll go here now and then I'll do an offset and then get ready for the extrusion. All right, so I'll do a quick save here, and then I'll do extrude. And from here, I'll do a really small offset. 0.1 is all I need, okay? So I have this 0.1. Now, what's going to happen is you need to be careful. So it's going to be offset, clean up, extrude, clean up, because look what happens on these really, really tight areas here. Again, this is all based off of our reference where these you know, really, really come to a fine point here. So you may or may not have to do this. But, you know, I just want to make sure that you can see, you know, me going in here, cleaning these up where I don't have, you know, this, these crossing verts here. And you can kind of also see how I terminated them. And then you can see where I'm using triangles. And then we want to make sure to kind of nicely space these out. 
and then get rid of any geometry that that we don't need right so in this case you know i have this which is fine but i could actually just kind of weld these vertices here and it's going to make it easier to to extrude this so i can go ahead and kind of just kind of delete this edge here and then we have something like this all right and we have this triangle terminating there and then it, i just do this in areas where it gets really really tight with vertices right so again you can kind of see what's happening here so i'm just going to space these out so this actually needs to go the this way and we're just getting this nice tight offset now it also depends on how much room if you give yourself more room here for this offset and whatnot that is completely fine too so again i'm not going to spend a lot of time doing all the cleanup but this is the cleanup that i had to do to get this to work right all right and now that we've gone through and done all of the cleanup here you know i haven't done it on this one but for example We've cleaned up all the vertices and everything. We want to go ahead and do the extrusion. Now, keep in mind, I don't want to extrude this from where uh, and include the offset. I want to minimize that offset. So I simply did shift comma. If you do shift period, it grows selection, shift comma, shrinks selection. And that works perfectly with how I, I did this. So you can see this is a nice quick tip, a nice workflow tip here, and it works really well. Then I go ahead and do another extrude face. And I move that down. And I want to move this down by minus 0.15. And then I end up doing it again. And this one's going to be much smaller. It's going to be 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05. So we get something like this. Then, so this is giving us that nice holding line there. Then I want to do it again, but this time with an offset. So minus 0.05 or minus maybe 0.1, or I think I ended up doing minus 0.05, something something really, really small. Or excuse me, sorry, not point net minus, but something like 0.05. There you go. So you get something that looks really good, and this is what it should look like. We have our offset face loop here. We have the extrusion, the extrusion with the holding line, and then the offset. So you get something like this. And then we can go ahead and smooth preview. And then this is what we get. So you can start to see this is looking really good. But then we have to clean up some of this geometry. So I'll go ahead and give this kind of this fong material. So you can see how well this works. Now, don't worry about this. Like I said, uh, I cleaned all of this up in the final version. But now what we need to do is because if we look at a reference again, you can see that you know it's these corners are tight and everything. Well, we can leverage the amount of subdivisions that we have and we can start cutting in some of that detail. And what I do for some of these is I'll just kind of split this face here and just kind of go down like so, All right? And the good thing here, you guys, is because this is such a detailed model, right? You can see how I did this. So I'm maintaining quads here. And because of this extrusion here, I don't have to worry about you know going in and cleaning up this triangle. You certainly can, but what I'm trying to show you is it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter because it's going to subdivide well. And because of these tight edges, look at that. Not a single artifact. It looks perfectly fine. Right, So I really hope that you stuck with me on this workflow and you can see the benefit of, of doing this versus kind of the, the previous method. I use both. Right, I use both and it works really, really well. So here you can see we kind of have this triangle and I want this nice hard edge here. So we can you know just add in a triangle there. And then we can, you know, maybe go in and do another, you know, cut around like this. And I'll cut here. And look, this kind of worked out where, you know, this ends up as a kite quad, triangle, triangle, perfectly fine. And then what I end up doing is terminating that. So I'm, I use these types of techniques here to really tighten these corners up. So you get something like that. And again, no artifacting, no lumpies. I can kind of zoom out and you kind of see how things look, right? Then, once I'm done there, I go ahead and make sure that I find my pattern that I did. Now, I know it's based off of this, so I can select this. Or you can simply select the faces here, like so, delete those, and then just delete the rest of the mesh, right? And so you're left with that. Oops, obviously, don't delete the face that we need.
Oh, I needed to finish this one off here. And there you go. You delete that. And then now you're left with the nice repeatable pattern. And then we can simply use the edit duplicate special. And we can, you know, use the values that we have. Now, just so we're on the same page, right? I have, you know, these, I save these kind of in a work doc so I can always kind of come back and reference them. So, you know, I'll go ahead and rotate this here by 32.727272 and do 10 copies and with an instance. And then there we go. Oh, I think the pivot of this is just off, if I remember correctly. And what I can do, you obviously want to make sure that the pivot, and this is because I combine things, is just sit right at the uh, zero, zero, zero. So this is what makes it easier to kind of work like this. So actually I'm going to undo all the way and delete these, select this, isolate that, hit insert to move your pivot, hold X to snap to grid, and there you go. Then now we're exactly where we need to be. And that's the benefits of working at the origin and working with zero, zero. And there you go, everything kind of works as intended. And and these are instances, so what you can do uh, is, you know, go back and make sure, you know, things are working and um, the way that they should. Like if I wanted to change this pattern here, I can. So I can kind of move this piece here. And the good thing is it's based off of instancing. So I can add this nice detail here and you can see that it, it moves it everywhere else right? Because it's based off of instancing. So that's nice. I can, you know, modify these patterns and do the kind of that final pass here. And that's how I kind of did this where I've, I kind of widened this area out like so. And then I made sure that it was all good to go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and group these, hide this. And what I ended up with this here and I can pull up the final version right here. So I have the done version and you can see exactly how I did it. And you can see all the triangles, kind of how I finished up the corners and, you know, probably the area that needed the most attention was when it starts to really get to this kind of really thin area over here into this thick area and then there's this corner but you can see once you smooth preview that and look at it with you know the full mesh it really really holds up well and you also have to keep in mind is that you know i'll be looking at this model pretty much from this view here so as long as it holds up from this part that's all that really matters all right so this is the overall workflow that i did on the tire and I hope you found that helpful. You know, it's a little bit more complicated, but this is how I get very, very complex tread to all be part of the single tread and not be a modular piece, right? If you need modular piece and modular uh, separated tread, then take a look at this workflow here. This is probably my favorite way to do it with Quadraw. Um, but otherwise, this is how I would do kind of this single molded tire tread. All right, now that we finished that, I'm going to go ahead and quickly cover how I did the rim modeling. All right, so for the rim modeling, I have everything kind of set up here and you can kind of see what I have. And I have this nice reference image. So same thing. Now for the rim, it was a little bit, you know, it wasn't difficult by any means, but most of the time you're not going to have the brand right here. So luckily I was able to find Volk Racing and this information here. So I was able to find that, but I actually didn't, you know, pay attention to this at the beginning. Instead, I just researched, you know, hey, what was the specifications of this, of this wheel and rim? And man, you'll find forums and people talking about it. They'll let you know exactly what wheel, which led me to this website here. So obviously Neato Tire for the tire. And then I used Ray's uh, concept racing. This is where I found the exact rim. Now there were a couple of variations. There were five lug nut variations and, and differences here. I needed to make sure that I had the four lug nut variation, which is what I have uh, here. All right. So once I get that, 
I go ahead and do the same exact thing that I did with the tire. So I'm going to hide the tire and let's bring in the rim. And what I ended up doing here is finding the overall dimension of the rim. And I have that right here. So I have the rim size and I did this by 36 segments. And this one was a 17 inch rim. So I know that a 17 inch rim will be, you know, times 2.54 centimeters, right? And that's the diameter. So then I divide it by two to get the radius. And there you go, 21.5. So that's what I ended up using here. And then for the height is once I've modeled the tire, I can go ahead and kind of use that as the, the width here for the rim. So that's how I got the overall size. And this works great. And then what I can do now is just begin modeling, right? And this is very similar. I mean, this is the exact workflow that I've used again in this uh, how to model rims. So I just, you know, start off with the quadra. So I'll quickly recap that here. So I'm going to hide the tire, hide all the stuff that I don't need. And you can see I have this quadra plane. So I created, you can use either a plane like this or you can use the cylinder, either one would work fine. So I actually just use the cylinder here and turn this into my live surface. And then I go here and I'm gonna hide obviously uh, all of the stuff that I've done and then f hide the done version and then just begin modeling. And what I'd like to do is make sure that I have symmetry on and I want the world X because I want to work an X or excuse me, Z world Z. And I can begin modeling. So simply enter quadra mode and begin plant planting your points. So remember, it's just simply left click four points shift left click to create a quad and then we have our line of symmetry so i'll move these right here for this line of symmetry and then there you go now what i end up doing here is just using the highlights in the reference because again you'll you'll have really really good reference here from any of these wheel websites they'll give you all these nice perfect angles which is exactly what i used to build my reference library and you can see all of that here so back to Maya, left clicking. And then what I end up doing actually is just kind of focusing on the edge flow. So I'll delete this edge right here. And then I want to just kind of have these nice edges here. That's going to support this overall highlight topology and edge flow. So I go ahead and just kind of build that out. So I'll go ahead and quickly build out this edge flow. And the key thing before I, I, I continue on is you want to make sure that you know the pattern that you're going to be working from. So if I know that one of these patterns here, uh, one of these parts of the rim, the stem of this rim, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. I love nice, easy numbers. So we go 360, right? Divided by six. And that's, you know, 60 degrees, right? So we want to make sure that we do six here. And this is going to be what we use for our symmetry. So I end up going ahead and just kind of modeling uh, this based off of uh, what we have. I believe I just end up rotating it like so and end up rotating it instead of 60 degrees, right? Because 60 degrees is a full rotation. I do 30 degrees. So there, this is our, our, line of, our radial line of symmetry. So that means I can go here and just continue modeling based off of this. And I can set this back to 36 or whatever. Oops, 36, not 360. And begin modeling based off of that, right? And again, I'll set this as our quadra surface and just kind of rough this in. Okay, so we end up getting something like this. So I have kind of this form here and I go ahead and refine that form, get it all into position here based off of our reference, like so. Okay, and then what I can go ahead and do is just make sure 
that with my reference here, so we have the rim reference, that you know these thicknesses and everything kind of line up. So I'm getting ready for that extrusion, right? And what I can do is go ahead and extrude this out, right? And this is where you know things may need a little bit of cleanup and adjustments, but I'll go ahead and you know maybe do a I give this this is pretty thick here, so I can do like maybe a nice you know one uh, segment here. So I can go ahead and you know start spacing these out, turn off my live surface, and we're just I'm just using control shift middle mouse button and drag. That's it. So that's simply what I'm using there. So I go ahead and give that thickness, and then what I end up doing is go ahead and just kind of connecting this face to this face here. So I'll go ahead and you know do a simple uh, cut here. So I'll actually remove this edge here and end up removing this edge. And I can just simply kind of cut down right about here and just continue on that like so. All right, sorry about that. Maya kind of crashed there for a second. But once you get that, you know, you kind of clean up that edge here, you kind of match these. I go ahead and bridge these across like so. So there you go. So you have that nice and clean. And then I can just kind of continue the extrusion process, right? So what I end up doing is leaving kind of these bottom faces here and deleting this. So now I kind of have this open face like so. And then I would just grab, you know, these pieces here. And let me go ahead and just kind of get this all cleaned up so I don't have too much stuff here. And I can get rid of this cylinder. And what I can do now is bring this in, hide that. And I can start kind of working my way out. So now that I have that, I can just extrude. And then I jump to the front view and I just start, you know, I just position these to kind of get the right position for these verts. Now this is where it helps to have a cylinder for reference. So I make sure, just to make sure everything is gonna smooth out properly, I make sure to get the number of edges here like so. And I can see this is about 14 edges, right? So this is what we have so far, right? And I'm gonna end up moving this back into position, right? And because of the way this is, before I further extrude this out, I know that I need to grab this cylinder here and I can just grab this 36 segment one should be fine, which is the one I just hid previously. And if I know that again, I have 14 edges and then times six, right? Cause we're working with uh, uh, radial symmetry here is cause we're going to duplicate this by uh, six and I have 84 segments. So I, I would go through now and change this to 84. And this is going to make sure that my cylinder and that my rim is going to be nice and even based off of this. And I'm going to actually freeze transforms here and scale this by 1.01 here. And I'm just going to kind of non-uniformly scale, scale it. So I'll do these by 1.01. .01, just to make sure that it's about the right size here for the outer part of the rim. And there we go. So I use this as my reference to make sure that my cylinders are and my rim is perfectly, perfectly round because otherwise it would cause a lot of issues down the road if I make sure that it's not. And I can go ahead and kind of start moving some things and then I can just kind of clean this up in a second. Okay, and there we go. You can kind of see how everything's starting to kind of match up nicely, which is great. And I can go in here now and just kind of grab this. So, you know, very straightforward build process. So I'll grab my reference image 
And we can, of course, multi-cut here. And we can, I would say, probably you know, multi-cut a little bit higher there. So we're just kind of adding in these uh, edges. And I would say, you know, I could extrude, but I'll probably just kind of move these edges in. I think we'll probably work a little bit better for what I'm trying to do. And we get rid of this here. So you'll see kind of what I'm doing. So I have these faces. And then now, all based off of this, and I can just kind of move this in, like so. So you can start to kind of work with that there. I can kind of move this out to get to the right position for the rim. And, you know, I would, of course, now just kind of work my way back. So extrude that. If I then extrude again, so do that. Probably grab this edge again, extrude, and just extrude this down. And then, you know, this is essentially how you're going to get the back side of the wheel. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, I would just typically extrude this back up. And because this has to come on the opposite or inside, I would just kind of extrude up, extrude out, extrude down. Sometimes I use more precise measurements and then just kind of, there you go, extrude that all the way back in. And then I'll, you know, eventually merge this back. Looks like I forgot an edge there. And I will just, you know, merge this with these vertices here. So that's how I do kind of the in, in, inside piece. And then as I'm wrapping this up, you know, you're going to go ahead and just, you know, add in the holding lines now. So I don't want to obviously add one that runs across like this. Remember what we've covered in past videos with topology and edge flow, we will kind of want to cut in some of this geometry. So I'll go ahead and just kind of cut around like so. And same thing here. I don't want to just, you know, or I can add, I can add one just to go across like this. And because of our nice edge flow, you know, this is going to give us that nice holding line there. So this would kind of work as needed here. And then I can you know, add a line there. And this will give us that nice extra subdivision too, to kind of space out there. And of course, let me just wrap this edge like so. And we take this triangle and end gun because we split this edge and we just merge this to center. And then there you go. So you have this nice now this edge. So we just kind of keep that nice and clean, and something like this. Okay, so that's uh, how I would do that. And then I would go in and just give this, you know, because otherwise it's going to be really soft here. So if I give this a, uh, this Fong material that we have, right? And this is how I would add in those holding lines. I just go ahead now and just cut this across like so. And I'll just go ahead and kind of add that here. And same thing. We're just going to merge that to center. There we go. And cut this across. So that's kind of, you know, quickly how I would just use Quadra to get the base form in and get something like this. And then, you know, you start to get the overall form of the wheel and the rim there. And then you can cut a around the back side, all the same, just like we did with the front, you know, oops, kind of adding some edges there to more tightly hold that form, right? And depending on the reference, of course, you know, on how sharp, don't make things needlessly too sharp because you can kind of see it's a decent radius here. It's not too tight. It's not too sharp and machine, meaning I wouldn't take this edge here and really make that super tight. I see this a lot when people are, are modeling with a really, really tight in these edge and it gets too crisp. Well, that's not how it looks like in the reference, right? So you want to make sure to really, you know, keep reference in mind and control those highlights, control those holding lines. And, you know, I can take a look and see where we are here. So this is kind of where I had the uh, holding lines. And 
this is where uh, where we ended up. Okay, so versus kind of here, um, all I really did was take this piece here on this. So if I select all of these edges here real quick, or these vertices, like so, and we'll move that back. And there you go. So that's how I made sure that I get this inset here. Otherwise, it won't, uh, you know, wouldn't look correct. But yeah, this is the what I ended up doing with the holding lines. Uh, I'll cut in there and then add in those extra lines there. Obviously, I need one one more right about there. And I'd say for sure, you know, we're going to probably have a couple more there. So you get something like that. Right. And once you get to this point, you know, it's pretty easy. Then you would go ahead and use duplicate special. And again, we're using six of these stems, these rim stems. So that's 360 divided by six. So I need five copies since we have our sixth one here. Rotate 60 degrees, instance that. And then there you go. Now, don't worry if things aren't lined up. That's where instancing comes in. Because what I can do now is go back to our, you know, cylinder here that we have for, you know, 36 segments here. And I'll grab all of these guys. And then just make sure to really kind of get these in. And the nice thing is I can go to like this, these pieces here, because they're all instances, go to vertice mode. And this is like one of my favorite things. I was like, oh yeah, I can just scale, scale these verts. So switch over to world mode. Boom, look at that. It just kind of fixes that. And that fixes that look everywhere because we're using instancing, right? And obviously I just need to make sure that it just also is nice and clean there. Right, so you would do all of that, get everything kind of cleaned up, you know, adjusted, and I would go down here as well. And we're about done here. We're gonna be wrapping this up here. This is kind of the final steps. And I would do the same thing, scale in, oops, the axis here. All right, and you know, I think for this one, I'll go ahead and group that one. And I have the finished version of the rim here with the wheel done. And I can show the rim that I had. And you can see that I kind of cut in these holes. Now, the annoying thing with this is because this is a four lug nut hole here, it is symmetrical going across. So I could do that, but I actually just showed, well, sometimes it it just gets machined in after the fact and it's not symmetrical. So I'm gonna quickly show a, a quick time lapse of kind of how I did that and then we'll we'll call this one done. All right, so here you can see I'm just prepping the geometry to get ready for the four lug nut extrusion. Now I could have did this with symmetry, but again, I wanted to show you this just by doing these manually. So I select the geometry or I select the faces I do an offset and then I use a, a circular rise. All those are just modeling tools right within Maya. And then once I do that, after the circular rise, I go ahead and extrude them in. And then I go ahead and extrude the back side as well to get a little bit more depth. And then I end up connecting those faces once I punch the hole through. Very straightforward. Okay, so here we are. We finally wrapped up the wheel and the rim. And there's, you know, some lug nuts and valve stems that I'll add later, but I covered that in the last video. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. I know I probably went a little bit long on trying to get both the tire and the wheel in one video, but hopefully, you know, with the tab table of contents and everything, you can jump to wherever you need to. So it uh, should be completely fine. All right, next video, we're getting really close to wrapping this car up but we're gonna start adding in all the mod kits and these final details here. So really looking forward to that as always. Uh, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe always helps or just a simple like, you know, the algorithm really likes that and it has really been helping my channel grow. So thank you to all those that like this. You know, I don't get paid for any of this. I'm just kind of putting this content out there to just to help people. You know, I've been teaching for a long time. So, you know, just want to get to reach out to more people anyways. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate it as always. Take care and I'll see you guys around.